Welcome to Rebecca Sounds Reveille. We are super delighted to talk to you today um, about some things that you need to know. And we have an absolutely phenomenal guest today. She is going to be sharing some information about things that are going on in her world, but things also, again, that you do need to know. We, um, we cannot even begin to talk about some things without wanting to be motivated by it, no matter what the situation is, right? And on Rebecca Sounds Reveille, we're going to talk today with a motivational speaker, an award-winning author, and um, she hosts a national TV show based on her first book, The Alternative Medicine Cabinet. We want to be motivated by this because if you aren't filled and excited about learning and getting things in your toolbox, the resource kit that you have to get you motivated to make some changes and healthy lifestyle changes, well, it just doesn't stay permanently. It might be a short-term thing. So we want to keep you going on this. And um, she has earned her PhD in natural health and has authored five, yes, five books, including Body Mind Therapies for the Body Worker, Conquer Your Stress with Mind and Body Techniques, which was the winner um, of an Indie, Indie Excellence Award. Um, and she'll share more about that with you. She's been studying mind and body medicine um, at Benson Henry Institute for Mind and Body Medicine at Harvard Medical School and has been featured as an expert in numerous, numerous publications such as Glamour, Ladies Home Journal, Marie Claire, um, Huffington Post. You might be familiar with her. She has just been all over, but she's got a lot to share today. And with us is Dr. Kathy Groover. Welcome. Thanks so much for having me. I appreciate it. I am absolutely delighted to talk to you because you know what you're talking about. And uh, there is so much to share. Let's talk about what you're currently doing right now. Yeah, it's funny. When I hear you read my bio and it's already wrong. I've just finished my seventh book. Seven! So, yeah, like literally this morning I finished the edits and went, took it back to the editor so she could redo what I just did. I added a chapter. But yeah, so I, I keep telling my father I'm not going to write any more books. And he says, yeah, till you write the next one. I'm like, yeah, okay. Yeah, oh, I so love it. Seventh one. Seventh I one. I love it. Uh, I'm doing tons of speaking. I just booked a couple more. I'm going around the world and, and seeing some amazing things and getting to share what I do with so many people, which is so exciting to me. That's really why I learn all this stuff, you know, is to share with people what I know and how to get them excited about health and stress reduction and mind-body medicine and trapeze and dance class and, you know, all this stuff. This is why I do this. So and you've got to be motivated, though not only yourself to do that, but to get people to be motivated and to stay motivated. Because as I was saying earlier, I mean, if you don't keep that motivation going, it's not permanent. Yeah. Yeah. It really has to become a habit. And I hear people complaining about, you know, they don't have time to meditate. They don't have time to exercise. They don't have time. And I think one of the reasons is they're not customizing that to what they like to do. They think exercise has to be going to the gym and lifting weights, or they have to go for a run, or if you don't like that, you're not going to do it. And so when you find something that really thrills you, which really rings your bell, then you're going to find time to do it. And that's one of the keys is to all of this is customization. You have to do what's going to work for you. I love that. And I've talked to so many different people and, you know, none have really honed in on that. It's kind of like if you can do this, but custom customization, as you're saying, is really key and crucial to this because for example, there are so many people that have conditions that prevent them from doing some of the things that are out there that do work for so many different people, but it just does not work for them. And um, not too long ago, I you know, thought, okay, here's a program. It, I can do this. And then there were some limitations that 
I have that prevented me from doing it. And it was very discouraging. And I thought, oh, wow. And I'm sure that I'm not the only person in that boat, but that keeps you, your, you know, the momentum from going, that motiv motivation kind of just is like a balloon that just kind of peters out and you're thinking, well, there really isn't too much for me to do. And well, what do I do? Right. That's when you have to get creative. And I was talking to my father the other day and my father is about to be 75 and he's incredibly, used to be incredibly athletic and now through, you know, tearing an Achilles and hurting a shoulder and he's got two bad knees and, you know, you do start to run out of things to do. And yeah. it's like, even I'm finding that it's like, I've got tendonitis in my elbow, which only flares up when I do push-ups. Okay. So push-ups are out. Okay. Well, right. I pretty broke my finger. So kickboxing's out because I can't punch anything. Okay. So, and I've got, you know, and I've got a toe that doesn't allow me to go up and down on my toes. So bar method is out. So I'm, cl I'm, I'm I told my dad, I said, you know, I totally get why you stopped exercising because you start to run out of the things you love to do. I said, but you know what? There's 30 other things you can do. So I you got to find them, whether it's swimming, walking on the treadmill, doing an arm bike, for God's sake. I mean, there's something you can do to move your body. And in the same way, even if you're not a formal meditator, and I was never very good at that. I talk fast, you can tell. Um, I'm a dancer, so don't sit down and tell me to like clear my brain. It's not going to work. That is not what I do. But I found other ways to meditate that now brought me into that type of meditation. So, you know, you have to you have to be creative and you have to want to do it. You have to sign that contract in your own mind of I'm going to be a healthy person. I'm going to do this. You just have to. I so love it. I yeah. absolutely love it. What's the, so what's the first step? I mean, what is the first step to really getting the motivation? I mean, hearing you just inspires me because I can feel your enthusiasm and I'm like ready to rock and roll. <laughs> just with I, get that. I, mean, I get a little hyper. I'm, I'm yeah. <laughs> I love it though, because you need that and you sometimes need the support of someone else who has that same enthusiasm or we kind of end up isolating ourselves and we're like, oh, you know, nobody else really kind of wants to do this or they don't feel the same passion that I do. And so, well, okay. I mean, we have a million excuses, but I can feel the passion that you have and the enthusiasm, the excitement. And I want to get on board with what you got going because I feel like I can do it. And, um, and I absolutely love that. I, I do. Um, tell me like, where is the first part? So like, if I wanted to keep the momentum going, you've got to have tools for me to go to so that I can do that and just get that daily pump. Yeah. It, this all comes down to one really simple thing. You have to make a choice. Okay. And we choose not only from a nutrition standpoint, what we put in our mouth every day, we make that choice. Do you want the hamburger? Do you want the, do you want the fries with that? Do you want the salad? Do you want that? You know, we make that choice every day. That's all on us. No yes. one's forcing food down our throat. It's us. And in the same way we choose what we allow into our mind, are you going to watch the news? Are you going to read that nasty post on Facebook? Are you going to watch the funny cat video? Are you going to turn off all social media? And I had a friend the other night say, you may have noticed I'm not on Facebook anymore. And I said, go, you know, actually, now that you say that, I, I realize I haven't seen you on there. And he said, I never walked away from social media happy. And so he turned it off. He couldn't handle the infighting with the election. He couldn't handle the people getting nasty with each other and judgmental. And so he turned it off. And I said, good for you. I said, I miss seeing what you're doing, but oh my God, we'll have to have a conversation. Yes. <laughs> What's up with that? Uh, but he had a really good point. And the fact that he said, I've never gotten off Facebook happy really was, like, that really struck me because we choose what we look at. We choose right. what we focus on. And then the next choice is, how do we respond to that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What is the choice of what we're thinking about that? Now, emotions are hard to control, but we can control our thoughts. And that's really the key to stress. That's the key to exercise. That's the key to everything. You know, I dance three or four days a week because I made that choice to do that. And I will not see clients that night. I will. I mean, you, it has to be something darn good to get me to miss dance class. I love I it. Made that choice that that's for my health. That's for my sanity. I got to go do it. And so you just have to make those choices. You just have to. And you're having fun with it. It's something you like to do, dancing. And what an expression, though, because dance really allows you to express externally uh -huh. so many different things that are going on internally and what a release that is. And so, I mean, you are doing so many things through dance that really make a difference. Let me ask you, what current thing have you got going that you can share with the audience today? I am in the middle of putting together my online stress program. 
Ooh. And I'm actually really, really excited about that. So I'm going through Thinkific. Thinkific. I think that's, that's yes. what it is. Yes. That's the Freedom M. Uh, I looked at multiple different platforms and I absolutely loved that one. So after book seven is uh, it the publisher, um, that's my next thing. So I'm putting that together and I'm so excited to share that with everybody. It, I haven't even started. Literally, I have the banner up on the page. That's as far as I got. I but love that's it. the next thing I'm doing. So I'm really, really excited. And so where can everyone go to find your books and so on? We're going to continue talking, but at this point, I really want to get, um, you know, the audience the link to go to find your work, your books, yeah. and how they can connect with you. Absolutely. There's a couple choices. So kathygroover.com is mainly my speaking site. So if I can come to your organization, your company, and share everything I know about stress and nutrition, I would love that. That's my passion. Um, and that's kathygroover.com. And then sort of my more general get everything about me site is thealternativemedicinecabinet.com. And both sites have my books. Um, and you can find out about media. I'm on Wikipedia and YouTube. And oh, my TEDx talk just is it just about to hit 30,000 views. Are you I know kidding? that's not huge. I know that's not a lot compared to it. my cat video has like five million views, but but <laughs> I'm, I'm excited, but I'm excited about thirty thousand. That's pretty cool, you know. And I mean, I it is very it. cool because yeah. it, it's taking off. I want to talk though about the alternative medicine cabinet because you've got a lot of information there, and yeah. I think that our society, not only here in the United States but globally, is starting to go away from traditional medicine because they're finding that just by watching a commercial on TV alone for some type of a prescription kind of says it all. You're going to go, you're going to get treated for something, but you're going to end up probably experiencing a lot of other side effects that you didn't have as a problem to begin with. And so it's kind of like, what can I do to treat? And I know that you know, based on legalities, we can't really say cure, but eliminate or mostly eradicate some kind of a challenge that we're experiencing, right? Yeah. And so you know about alternative medicine. And so a lot of people are thinking, well, does that mean that's called holistic? Or does that mean that it's something from another country? What mm -hmm. exactly, you know, does alternative mean to me? Yeah, that's actually a really phenomenal question. And I love that you gave those sort of multiple choice answers because yes, it's all those things. Um, holistic is, it, it means incorporating. It is all encompassing. Holistic is bringing in those tools that we need from whatever toolbox. And, you know, I remember being in wood shop in high school and we were told to buy a hammer, a Phillips head screwdriver and a mat knife. That's all we needed. That's all okay. we started with because you're making like hardly anything. But okay. as we get older, as we build more things, Maybe we need a wrench. Maybe we need an Allen wrench. Maybe we need, you know, there's these other things that we put into our toolbox. And it's the same with us as humans. We might start out with, oh, my doctor said to do this and I stretch once a week to, hey, you know what? I'm going to do Tai Chi and, you know, I'm going to throw in homeopathics because those really work. That's right. holistic. To me, if what you're experiencing is not life-threatening, if you're having a heart attack, please don't come to me for an herb. If you've just been stabbed, I'm not massaging you. Not going to happen. Please go to the right. ER. I'm so glad that we have this emergency medicine, this heroic medicine that we're saving lives and that we have a lot of those prescriptions. I'm really pleased that my dad can inject his insulin every day and that he is still with us, you know? Um, yes. But 15 years ago, had he watched his diet, had he exercised more, then maybe he wouldn't have needed that. So it, it becomes that, that combination of things. And I think we have to pull from both sides of that. But, you know, things like herbs, maybe you're doing Chinese herbs or acupuncture, which is absolutely coming from another country or Ayurveda or Thai massage, or there's so many options. And we forget that sometimes we get so pigeonholed into this is what I do. And this is who I am. And that's outside of my knowledge base or my comfort zone that yes. we forget there's so many options and you just have to explore them again if it's something that's not life threatening um but you know there's 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 choices there's things you can try yes and you know what's very interesting is that people are becoming seekers of this particular arena the alternative side and if you look back 20 years ago and you were talking about this they kind of had an image of i don't know 
something oh, yeah. kind of taboo or hippie or something along those lines. And we're finding that this really is the key to really having a good, healthy lifestyle. And I mm-hmm. really like the motivational portion behind it. And I really like the choices and decision making so that both of those things keep people stuck into yeah. having a healthy lifestyle. I would rather be stuck in having a healthy lifestyle than stuck in having an unhealthy lifestyle. Yeah. But the decision is really, like you said, so important to make those choices. And it's in every aspect, as you said, social media, everything that's coming into your body, regardless of the resource. Yeah. And so you really have taken so much of the learning and put it out there so that people don't have to do digging and doing research. These are the resources and tools that are right here at your fingertips. And all you have to do is make a choice. Yeah. And you do have to do what's going to work for you. And again, mm-hmm. it comes to that customization thing. I love getting acupuncture. I know people that doesn't, that, that doesn't resonate with that's, that's totally fine. American herbs work better for me than Chinese herbs. I don't Very interesting. Know. It because I'm a good German girl and I'm not Chinese. I don't know. I don't know how far that goes back in our DNA to foods resonate with me better than other people. You know, whatever it is, you have to experiment with that. And that's kind of a cool thing about complementary alternative medicine or holistic medicine or integrative medicine or, you know, it really is customizable. And if you look at something like homeopathics, you know, I use the example, if five people with a headache go to their Western medicine practitioner, they're probably going to walk out with five really similar drugs. If five people go to a homeopath, they're going to walk out with five vastly different remedies because it's customized to your headache, not to you, but to your headache. Is it the right side or the left side? Is it you want cold air? You want to be under a blanket? You're cranky. You feel better when you put your head between your knees. You know, there's all these weird things that help you get to that remedy and you have to do the research yourself and find out what resonates for you and the joy of the internet is we can find anything to support anything and the horrible thing about the internet is we can find anything to support anything and you paranoid joe's blog and they're telling you how horrible homeopathics are and you get on all you know all this stuff and you can find anything so be smart about your research and where you're getting these sources. And that's, that's the key too, is people read one article and go, oh my God, I actually had someone think they had Legionnaire's disease the other week. They had Googled all these symptoms and they were sure they had Legionnaire's And I'm like, I don't know what you have, but I'm pretty sure it's not Legionnaire's disease. Okay. That, like, that we don't even get that anymore. So, you know, so you just have to be careful where you're getting your research and what you're reading and what you're believing. And, and I know people who are sure they're dying because they found something online and that's, that's really dangerous. So I'm glad we have that info and those resources. Um, but just, just use a little grain of, of, of common sense with that too. <laughs> well, that makes a lot of sense though. And um, common sense. And um, so, you know, one of the things that you're moving to is your online class in stress, stress reduction. And so let's talk for a minute how that comes into play with all of these other things. Uh-huh. Yeah, stress is, it's a killer. I mean, it's, it's associated right now with between 60 and 90% of our doctor's visits, depending on whose statistic you look at. So many things, uh, you know, outside of the, what we thought used to think of the norm was ulcers and high blood pressure, you know, to have the ruddy faced, slightly overweight businessman having his third cocktail for the evening. Ugh, that's what we used to look at as stress, but that's, we're all facing it. Um, and it's contributing to things like pain syndromes and autoimmune conditions and cancer and you know pretty much everything is affected by stress and when i go into organizations like arthritis foundation or scleroderma foundation and i say you know how many of your symptoms are exacerbated when you're stressed every hand goes up uh-huh. we have to start to control that now but here's the key stress is not the problem uh, because we can't control the stress. We can't okay. control the government. We can't control the traffic. We can't control the guy that slammed on the brakes on the yellow light when we thought we were going to get to go through too. We can't control him. We can't move him as much as we'd like to. But what we can control is our response to that. Yes. And the fact that most of our stress is coming from inside here. Right. We're making it up. We're dwelling in the past. We're worrying about the future. We're freaked out about that meeting on Monday. We're thinking about how bad the meeting was Friday. We're ruining our entire weekend. And that's our fault. And we can control those thoughts and we can control those responses. Now, it takes practice. Don't get me wrong. I'm not like 
shaming anybody into having these, these negative thoughts. But we do have to take steps towards getting rid of those. We don't need that very base fight or flight response that we had way back in caveman days. Way back, right. you know, I don't know about you. I haven't been chased by a bear recently. Just haven't had it happen. Um, if you're about to, you know, if you're in a law enforcement or something where you do need to have that very physical fight or flight response, I'm so glad we still have it. But when it's our boss gets cranky with us and we have this, we mount this huge, uh, you know, cascading hormone fight or flight response, we don't need that response to that emotional thing. Right. But we're building it and it's destroying our health and it's driving us crazy and it's making us sicker. Um, so we have to find ways to manage that. And that's where things like meditation and mindfulness and affirmations, visualization, breath work, these are all the things I teach in my class. And so it's a five stage process. I start with the breath work and I expand on it from there. And if you're sitting there listening to this thinking, I can't meditate, I'm terrible at it, I fail at it, da 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 da, da. welcome to my world. I'm a little type A, probably noticed. So um, <laughs> if I can do it, just a little, just a touch. Um, if I can do it, you can do it. And I teach it in ways that are so simple that I've taught it to children, I've taught it to addicts, I've taught it to people in recovery. I, it's, it works. You just have to make the choice to do it in the way that works for you. And again, it comes to that customization. You know, you just have to do what works. <laughs> Excuse me. Bless you. <laughs> yes. I had a response there. <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> oh, that's okay. You probably saw me at one point do this. There was a spider descending in front of my face. <laughs> I love, you know, and for some people that would be very stressful and you handled right. that very well. Yeah, oh, I don't mind spider. Yeah, little daddy longlegger who's now living somewhere in my office. We'll have to find him later. Yeah, and let I him, absolutely him. love it. I absolutely <laughs> love it. You, you just really are so inspirational and you do a lot of speaking. Where yeah. and how does someone get it in contact with you aside from, is it just through your website? And that's the easy, yeah, that's the easiest way. I mean, my email's on there. There's a con, you know, a contact me now form kind of thing on all of my sites. That's the best thing. Um, you can email me. It's, it's Dr. Kathy Groover at gmail.com. So it's DR and then Kathy with a K Groover with a U V um, E R. And, and so, yeah, I mean, I just, I love helping. I love going and I've actually done a lot of speaking for 911 dispatchers, uh, which I sort of fell into. It unfolded very accidentally. I was putting in to speak at a bunch of conferences and one, um, called APCO said yes. And I got very excited. I was going to New Orleans and I was going to do this talk on stress. And about a week before the conference, my husband said, what does APCO stand for? And I went, uh oh, oh, I, I don't know. And he goes, wow, you really might want to figure that out. And I said, yeah, yeah I really should figure that out. Yes. And it's, it's public communications is what it is. Um, Association of Public Communications officials, I think it is. Uh, but it's 911 dispatchers. Uh, and that was my first talk with them. And I've done multiple other conferences for other organizations. And I've gone into counties and I've helped them specifically with their stress. And I love working with those populations, nurses and teachers I've done a lot of work with. Um, accountants, women in engineering, lawyers, you know, anybody that's dealing with stress. So everybody. Um, yes. Yes. Can benefit, yes. From, can benefit from this program. I actually had the privilege of helping to create a stress reduction program for the military, which was fen a phenomenal experience. Unfortunately, they didn't select ours, which I was so disappointed. But Ooh. now I have all those resources and all that at my fingertips that I can give to all of you. Um, I mean, I had the program already. This helped me hone it a little bit, you know, so it's just, I just have so much stuff I just want to help people and I and love going in and inspiring them. I am with you on that. My goal is really to help people have the tools and resources right at their fingertips to really maintain a healthy life mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally, in every aspect that they can. And resources has been the, the problem that I have found that people don't have. And so if they don't have it, they don't tend to kind of go out of the comfort zone and really start seeking it. But if they know that there is a place that they can obtain those resources mm -hmm. and it's not too difficult, they're going to go for it. And then it's like this, you know, the cat is out of the bag and they are just ready to find all of the information, use it and, and just keep going with it. It's super exciting when that happens. And yeah. What I really am finding fascinating is your focus on the specific 
occupational groups that have highest amounts of stress. And it, like you're talking about 911 dispatchers and military, um, you're talking something that really speaks to the heart of me because I'm a retired police officer and a veteran. Mm -hmm. And these are the areas that I find in our society that tend to get overlooked in terms of dealing with stress. And I think that this is fantastic. I think that your course on stress is something that is going to be paramount to so many people, even aside from those. So um, as soon as you get your site going on the stress, your online uh, class there on the stress reduction, I really would like to help promote that in addition to all of the other work that you're doing, because I think it is crucial to getting this in the hands of people. And not only that, but once people are feeling less stressed, they're more, more motivated to seek the resources to address problems that they were fearful of addressing prior. Yep. And what I was going to say, and, and thank you for that, because I'm really excited about that program. And I love, I love working with people who are sort of the forgotten ones. And, and I think, you know, you look at first responders and you forget someone answered that call and sent that police officer to you. And yeah. they're not knowing how that story ended. They don't know if the kid drowned in the pool. They don't know if the woman got rescued from the, they don't know unless it ends up on the news. Typically there, there's just too much going on for them to follow up to see what happened to that person that they were helping. So they make up stories in their head and it tends to not be a good story. So those are sort of the forgotten people that fall through those cracks. Um, but, but what I was going to say was we breathe all the time. I would assume everyone watching this is breathing. If not, please call 911. Um, <laughs> you know, it's, it's something that we just, it's, we're just doing it. It's free. Um, right. Meditation is free. There's no side effects. There's no copay. Uh, if it doesn't work, if, if, if it doesn't work, if nothing else, you've just relaxed for a while, which has a health benefit. So all of this stuff is available and affordable. For, it's free. Um, and then once we're healthy in one aspect of our lives, it's really hard to stay unhealthy in another aspect. I mean, I don't know many people that, you know, run 15 miles and then go load up on the worst food and then have a cigarette and smoke some crack. They're probably not doing that. You know, right. so once you get your mindset in, in place and you right. can do this top down or bottom up, whether you start with the exercising, once you get to the gym a couple of times and you know how good that feels or whatever your form of exercise is, you don't want to let that go. You don't, it's like once you've had you, you, your teeth cleaned yes. and you're like, I kind of don't want to eat for a couple of days because it feels so good. That's the same thing with this. So if you, whether you start with the nutrition or you start with the moving your body or you start with the mind, once you get in that habit, you don't want to let other unhealthy stuff in. It's just, that's how we function as humans. We want to feel good in every aspect. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for being with us today. Please give the audience your contact information again for speaking, for learning, for resources and to obtain your books because Absolutely. those are the things that are going to really make a difference in their yeah. life. Oh, thanks so much. I so appreciate you having me, first of all. Um, yeah, so the best site is, um, just my general site is thealternativemedicinecabinet.com. There's actually tons of links to past articles and resources and, and re interviews. This will be up there. So if you want to hear more about very specific topics, you can go there. There's also all my books available. And then there's also kathygroover.com, which is my speaking site. You can see my TEDx talk and um, other speaking videos and a way to book me there, find out where I'm going to be speaking. So the alternative medicine cabinet.com and kathygroover.com. And I'd love to hear from you. I love reaching out and helping people. I get, as you can tell, very enthusiastic about all this. And so I want to, I want to help you be healthier and your company. So awesome. Thank you. Here. Thank you. Thank you so much. And for all of those of you watching, this is the time to make some changes. As we've been talking about today, choices are really important. And if you don't know where to start, this is the day to obtain the tools, the resources, and things that you need to make a difference. And as you can tell, all of this is in whole with everything we do. So just take the step as we we're talking about today to make one change because the rest of it then is where you don't want to be unhealthy and you'll begin to make the other changes. We're super excited about the information that Dr. Grover shared today. Also the information that she has on her website, the alternative Medi medicine cabinet, as well as her upcoming training on stress. And I think that this is 
going to be very crucial as well. Please share the information that you've learned today with your friends, colleagues, family, social media, anywhere that you can, because as she has indicated, it is really about making a choice. And we've talked about the resources. They're there. And you don't have to worry about the other things that are going to come with it that sometimes you get from traditional medicine. Thank you so much for watching, watching today. This is Rebecca Sounds Ruggley.